we're gradually transitioning into the next generation of over-the-air broadcasting, known as ATSC 3.0, or Next Gen TV. But there's plenty of mystery about what that truly means, and while we continue to monitor how exactly the new standard develops over 2020 and the years beyond, we've put together a few takeaways for anyone aiming to learn a bit more about the next wave in broadcast TV. These are five things you should know about ATSC 3.0. ATSC 3.0 is the next big step for OTA broadcast. At its simplest, ATSC 3.0 is the latest version of the standards used by over-the-air or OTA broadcasters. Those standards govern how signals are transmitted to our homes, and this latest version ushers in a whole host of new features and capabilities. The plan is to replace ATSC 1.0 with this new standard. And if you're wondering, hey, what happened to version 2.0? Well, the short version is that 2.0 was more or less out of date before it could really get off the ground. So those improvements are being carried over uh, along with some new features into what's now being called ATSC 3.0. Now, you might remember the switch from analog to digital that happened back in 2009, and the move to ATSC 3.0 is the first major advancement for OTA broadcasting since that time period. It'll also leverage broadband connections, in addition to over-the-air broadcasting, to deliver content. That will enable features like geo-targeted emergency information that can provide location-specific instructions, like evacuation notices or alerts to affected areas. And that ability to cater messages to specific areas also opens up the door for other possibilities, which we'll get into in a moment. We'll see a big boost in picture and sound quality, eventually. The biggest headline-grabbing improvements with ATSC 3.0 have to do with picture and sound quality. Uh, whereas current ATSC standards allow for OTA content in 720 and 1080 resolution, 3.0 enables up to 4K quality over the air. Now that's four times the resolution of 1080 and nine times what 720 can offer. Other improvements include support for a high dynamic range, or HDR, for more vibrant colors and bigger contrast between dark and light sections of the screen, and improved multi-channel audio going from 5.1 channels all the way up to 7.1.4 channels. And if you're wondering what that means, uh, basically the current ATSC standard supports 5.1 sound channels, so you get left and right front channels, uh, a center channel, left and right rear channels, and the subwoofer is the point one in that equation. The 7.1.4 standard adds two more left and right surround channels, and that point four refers to up to four overhead speakers mounted, say, in your ceiling. Uh, so if you have a very fancy speaker setup, ATSC 3.0 offers support. And it's not just TVs either. ATSC 3.0 opens up the possibility for OTA content on mobile devices like smartphones and tablets, and there's even talk about possibly providing broadband internet service via OTA. Now that's still in the planning stages as we publish this video, but it's an interesting possibility that we'll keep an eye on. One more thing, that pairing with broadband and the ability to offer geo-specific information we mentioned earlier, well, it could also be used to offer up more targeted advertising through your TV. So that sensation when you're browsing the internet and you spot an ad that seems specifically aimed right at you and your interests, well, ATSC 3.0 could allow for a similar experience depending on how the feature is implemented. Just a heads up. You'll probably need some new equipment. For the most part, yes, you'll need some new gear. TVs will need an ATSC 3.0 compatible tuner to access new content on the new standard, and that tuner could be built right into the TV or offered as an external device. And while older ATSC tuners are not compatible with this new version, support is coming to a handful of new TVs from LG, Samsung, Sony, and more. Meanwhile, your old TV won't become obsolete overnight. You'll just need an external uh, converter device to receive ATSC 3.0 broadcasts. Hardware makers like Silicon Dust are starting to offer ATSC 3.0 external tuners that fit that need as well. And while we're still discovering how exactly broadcasters will implement the new standard, it's possible you'll only need one converter for your entire household. Also, keep in mind that if you're already using an antenna for OTA broadcast, it should still work just fine for ATSC 3.0. But you don't need to upgrade right this second. 
Coming out of CES back in January, aggressive plans were in place to launch ATSC 3.0 in more than 60 markets across the country, including 40 of the top markets. But the ongoing coronavirus pandemic has slowed progress down considerably. And as of mid-May 2020, there are six markets in the country with at least one station using the new standard, and four others are prepping for launch later this year. Beyond the delays caused by the pandemic, the ATSC 3.0 rollout itself is actually voluntary, unlike the mandatory digital television transition back in 2009. So just because broadcasters can flip the switch to ATSC 3.0 this year, they don't necessarily have to just yet. Uh, even after a station makes that transition, they'll still generally need to carry ATSC 1.0 content for another five years. In other words, even if you're in a TV market that launches ATSC 3.0 stations this year, you'll still have time, which is good news for consumers, as it gives more TV makers and other hardware companies a chance to bring compatible devices to the market and ideally drive costs down. And there's one more reason it might be okay to wait a bit before splurging on new hardware, and it deserves its own section. More 4K content is coming, but it won't happen overnight. That's the other part of the equation. Uh, after all, just because broadcasting standards can support 4K HDR video, that doesn't necessarily mean all content will suddenly, automatically, magically jump to 4K resolution. Recent years have brought us more live sports coverage in 4K, including the most recent Super Bowl, but even that was a mixture of mostly 1080p cameras upscaled to 4K. The Tokyo Olympics could have been a key showcase for OTA 4K, but of course it's been moved to next year at the very earliest. So it could still be a showcase for ATSC 3.0 capabilities, it just won't happen this summer as planned. Overall, it's just going to take some time for native 4K content to become the norm. That's also true for HDR content. Upscaling and conversion can help some, of course, but like the upgrade from standard definition to HD, this won't be an overnight thing. In the end, if you're itching to invest in a fancy high-end TV right this second, it's probably worth ensuring it's ATSC 3.0 compatible. But unless you're among the earliest of early adopters, you're not likely to miss out on much by waiting things out and seeing how and when ATSC 3.0 launches in your neck of the woods. And those were five things you should know about ATSC 3.0. If you have any more questions, feel free to add them in the comments below, and we'll try to get to them in a future broadcast. For now, please do consider clicking the like and subscribe buttons located somewhere down below to support this channel and perhaps even that bell icon that uh, lets you know whenever we upload new content to this channel. And stay tuned for even more coverage about ATSC 3.0, including deeper dives into broadcast internet and antennas, both here on our YouTube channel as well as our news website, corecuttersnews.com. For now, though, my name is Philip Palermo. Thanks for watching. Take care.